This particular story is called The Fruit Brigade and I wrote this about 10 years ago so please <laughs> forgive me. Um, it starts like this. Billy Banana was on pins. It was six o'clock in the morning and he'd slept terribly all night. Eventually he got up to watch television. He opened the curtains. Rain was pouring down outside. Billy Banana sighed. Oh, I'm so tired, yet I can't sleep. And I'm so bored, yet there's nothing to do. Oh, I'll just lie down here. The reason Billy had paced up and down all night was because he was worrying about something. It was going to be his birthday party at two o'clock that following afternoon, and he was worrying that none of his friends would go. Billy had won a lot of money on the Fruit World National Lottery a few days earlier, and his money went straight into the Fruit World's National Bank. Billy Banana was rich. So why was he worried? Well, he was worried because he thought people might forget his birthday party. And he planned to share his windfall equally amongst all of his family and friends. That's the kind of banana he was. Thoughtful and caring. With that in mind, Billy had sent invitations to lots of the Fruit Brigade. Billy Banana is having a party and he wants you to come. Please bring games, fun things to play with, and most of all, bring yourselves. Refreshments provided, starts 2pm. Well, previously to this, Billy hadn't mentioned his lottery win to any of them. Not to Percy Pear, Alex Apple, not even to his favourite Susie Strawberry. He'd mentioned nothing as he wanted to surprise his friends and bring a little happiness into their lives. In fact, even though it was his birthday, he had thought about no one but the other members of the Fruit Brigade. Billy Banana jumped up and grabbed the phone. He dialed a number and it rang and rang and rang. Eventually, it answered. Hello, Gary Grape, Fruit Town Postman here. Can I help you? Uh, hello Gary, it's Billy Banana here. I'm just ringing to check you've delivered my party invites. I'm so worried, he spluttered. Gary chuckled. Oh, <laughs> relax Billy lad. I posted them all myself, first class. Everyone's coming, so go and get some rest and I'll see you later. Oh and uh, happy birthday Billy. Oh thank you Gary, see you later. Billy then hung up the phone and smiled. He was so happy. Billy then slept peacefully until lunchtime, content in the knowledge that the other members of the Fruit Brigade would be attending his birthday party after all. He was up and about now though, putting on some music, getting the food ready and gathering games and toys together, ready for the party later on, when there was somebody at the door. But it was only one o'clock, the party didn't start until two, he opened it. Hello Billy! Happy birthday! It was Susie Strawberry and Lisa Lemon, and they were smiling and laughing. Susie, Lucy, hello! cried Billy. You're early though. Yes, we thought we'd help you set up. After all, you should be relaxing on your birthday, said Lisa. Wonderful! Come on in then, I'm almost ready anyway, replied an excited Billy. So an excited Billy, Susie and Lisa got to work. They laid the table, put up blooms and decorations, and took out a huge cake from the oven. There, we're ready for the party, and we've still got five minutes to spare, said Susie. The door went again. Come on in, it's open, shouted Billy. And in came lots and lots of Billy's friends and family, with gifts, cards, and kind words. There was Gary Great, the postman, Rhiannon Raspberry, the singer, Pete Plum, the mechanic, and Brian Blackberry, the footballer. Linda Lyme, the shopkeeper, was there, and lots more of his friends. They all came in to greet Billy, Susie and Lisa. After opening his cards and gifts, Billy declared the buffet open, and they all tucked into sandwiches, cakes and drinks. The boys played on Billy's computer game, Fruity Football, which, funnily enough, Brian, the footballer, had brought for him. The girls danced to a brilliant song sung by Rhiannon Raspberry. And later, Billy called for silence. He declared he wanted to make a speech before the party came to an end. And so, when it was quiet, Billy stood up and said this. Dear friends, 
I thank you all for coming today. The presents and cards are all wonderful. I've had a lovely time and I hope you have too. They all clapped and cheered and jumped up and down. However, Billy shouted over the noise, however, and they all calmed down again. The real reason I invited you all here today was to share something with you. Billy exchanged a knowing smile with Ronald Brazen, the Fruit Town bank manager, while the others waited in, in, <laughs> waited in anticipation. Waited in anticipation. While the others waited in uh, waited, waited, wait, no, no, no. The others waited in anticipation. As you know, I like playing the Fruit World Lottery, he continued, and on Monday night I won a substantial amount of money of which I would like to share with you all. He looked in amazement to the door, which had been kicked open, cutting short his speech. Who are you? cried Billy. Shut up, motherfucker, put your hands in the air. Billy looked at disbelief with his friends. It was Arnie, the American avocado of the fearsome vegetable gang. Where's your money, you yellow-ass pinhead? He yelled, waving a gun at Billy. I don't know why I did the narration in that voice, but anyway. Um, Gary Grape, the postman, ran at Arnie to try and get the gun. Bang! Green fruit flew in all directions as a bullet nailed the poor Grape to the door. The fruit brigade quivered. Gary! Gary, no! cried Linda Lime. Bitch, shut the fuck up! shouted Arnie. Arnie beckoned his gang to wreck the house and shoot any of the poor fruit brigade who dared to try and intervene. Philip the P smashed the stereo. Carl Cucumber stole the computer game. Arnie broke windows and stamped on the cake. And Sammy Sprout punched Su Susie Strawberry in the face. Your health is ruined, motherfucker. And if you don't hand over the money, all your motherfuckers die. No I'm saying? shouted Arnie, brandishing his gun for effect. But it's not here. It's in the bank, coward, coward Ronald Raisin, the bank manager. Fool, you just signed your own death certificate, shouted Arnie. Hey, Sammy, shoot this whack-ass Raisin. I'm clean out of bullets. Bang, bang. Phil P shot Ronald Raisin stone dead in cold blood and laughed to his fellow gang members. Now, Billy, are you going to tell us where the money is or do we have to pop a cap in every single one of your asses? glowered Arnie. The fruit brigade shivered again and hugged each other in mute terror. OK, Arnie, you'll, you'll get it, said Billy solemnly. He reached for a tin box. At last the motherfucker shows us some common sense, laughed Arnie, and then all of his gang laughed. The money's in the motherfucking box. Yes, yes, you'll get it, said Billy to himself. Menacingly, he looked at the rest of the gang. First Gary Grape, dead. Then Ronald Brazen, dead. All my friends dead, killed by you and your gang in cold blood over money. Said Billy, walking towards Arnie. Under his arm was the tin box. The fruit brigade sensed a change of tone in their friend's voice, though. Then you wreck my house. Scare my friends. Hit Susie Strawberry. All you bring is destruction, terror, evil and death. I hate you, Arnie. Billy walked over to Arnie, waving the tin box. Arnie shouted, Shut the fuck up, fool, or I'll shoot you too. Just give me the tin of money, banana brain. I swear I'm gonna make banana spit out your way. Open it. It's yours, motherfucker, said Billy, handing over the tin box. Arnie just smiled defiantly and waved his arm at Billy, and the rest of the evil vegetable gang all laughed. Billy the banana turned to his cower cowering friends in the corner and smiled an angelic, heavenly smile and whispered, Death is not the end, my friends. The fruit brigade felt at rest and hugged each other again. At that point, evil Arnie the avocado opened the tin box and as the smile drained from his face, it dawned on him what Billy had given him. Why, you crazy motherfucker! <laughs> The whole house was blown to smithereens. Vegetables came apart and cried out in pain. And the whole house was reduced to ash. Arnie was dead. The fruit brigade, however, didn't feel any pain. They only saw a bright light at the end of a tunnel 
where Arnie and his pals saw only terror and blood and destroyed vegetable parts. The fruit brigade, however, saw a smiling Billy. Arnie and his pals saw only demons. The fruit brigade were at peace and painless, where Arnie and his pals felt constant pain till the end of time. The moral, the bad will always get the comeuppance in the end. That was The Fruit Brigade. Merry Christmas.